Welcome back to the channel. Today's a special episode. We are actually out in the field on a real job site installing some outdoor Cat6 wiring for cameras around the property. The type of cameras that we're putting in are the TIOC 8 megapixel 4K cameras. A really custom install for this property. And the type of wire that we're using is the Cat6 outdoor shielded wire. The video today is highlighting how to terminate or connectorize this wire because it is a little harder to deal with and I can probably give you some helpful tips. All right, let's get started. It is about 105 degrees out here today in Northern California. We have an infield switch inside of a locking box that we have some outdoor Cat6 running through and we're gonna need to put a RJ45 connection on this wire. I'm gonna have you come in a little closer here so we can go over some tools that you're gonna need and some you might not possibly consider. Number one, you're going to need our RJ45 Cat6 connectors. These ones here are made for outdoor cabling. Two, we're gonna need something to crimp that connector as well as cut. Three, I use a pair of lineman scissors. They help me out, uh, but not in the way you might consider. A pair of needle nose pliers and some cross cutters. First thing we're gonna do, we need to get underneath this outdoor sheathing. We have the outdoor weatherproof coating as well as some shielding underneath that, a moisture resistant layer, and then the actual wire. Uh, I like to use this Klein cut strip trim and crimper. Uh, it's my personal favorite. It's worked really well. I like it because it's very durable. Uh, in no way are we sponsored by Klein or anything like that. The model number on this, in case you want to find it, is the Victor Delta Victor 226-110. I've actually gone through quite a few different types of these uh, from different companies. This one is my favorite for a few different reasons. Uh, first thing we're going to do, it does have a strip section, so we're going to slide our wire in through here. Give yourself plenty on the end of this uh, because you're going to need some wire to work with. Once I cut that, a lot of times I'll roll it around until this outdoor sheathing comes off, exposing the shielding. Here I have my shield. I'm just going to peel that off. I have a ground cable as well as a piece of stripping cable if I need it. I don't though, so I'm going to trim that, pull the ground cable back. The next layer is this weather resistant fiber. We won't be needing that here, so we're going to cut that off and remove the plastic coating. Now we've got our four pairs of wires. I like to fold these guys down and we've got our internal brace structure here. We'll trim this off. Now we're ready to start working with this wire. The configuration that we are using is a type B configuration. Another cool part about these crimpers is that it shows you exactly what a type B T568B is in Bravo. Probably a very common industry standard as far as RJ45 connections go. And I like to kind of organize my wires based on color, orange, green, blue, and brown. And now we can go ahead and unwrap these. So one at a time, we'll untwist our wires. Um, this wire you'll notice is a little bit uh, harder to work with. It's definitely stiffer. I mean, it's a hot day today and it's still pretty stiff. I can't straighten it with my fingertips uh, as compared to like your normal riser Cat6 where I could easily flatten that wire out with my fingertips. Uh, so I'm just going to get them unraveled here first and then we're going to jump to our lineman scissors to flatten these guys out. There we go. Okay, so I have them all fanned out based on a type B connection, but they're still a little wiggly, a little twisted up there. I need to flatten these out so that I can get them into my terminal, my termination point here. These commonly in the tech world, we refer to these as ice cubes. 
So what I'm going to do is use my lineman scissors. And what's nice about these, most lineman scissors have, of course, a scissor side. They have a stripping side for like a telco type stripping where you can strip the, the wire out. But they have these little grooves on them here on the, the side. And that is actually made so that you can push your thumb on the wire and pull it out. And notice how nice and straight that is now. So I'm going to go through. I like to do two at a time on this and straighten out my wires. You don't have to pull too hard. It doesn't need a whole lot of force. Um, just a little bit with your thumb on these grooves. And it will pull this wire out nice and straight for us. So my wiring is nice and flat. I can then lay these out in the correct order. I'm not going to go over details on what the right coloring scheme is. You can look it up and find a schematic all over the place. But the main thing is I want to show you exactly how we connect this, how we terminate it. Uh, also, on these crimpers, there's a section that says cut. It gives you a nice straight, flat edge. So I'm going to run these through here, keeping them flat. And if you can see that there trim this. Now when you trim it, make sure to give yourself a couple inches here that you can work with. Uh, because the most difficult part <laughs> with this wiring is fitting all these into this little RJ45 connection. The goal is to keep them flat, as flat as you can. And these guys will all slide straight in to this block. Now, these ones that I'm using are pass-through, and the reason why I really like these a lot is because I'm noticing that my orange pair has flipped on me as I slid them into their slots. So I'm going to back this out, get everything nice and flat again. Once you get them kind of flat, you can use your lineman scissors again if you need to. Sometimes I'll use my cross cutters. You can do the same thing if yours doesn't have a cut side. and cut those wires flat with these. Same thing, we're going to try to slide these in here, keeping them as flat and as straight as possible, like so. Once I get them in there a little ways, I'll press them back down and verify that my color schematic is correct for a type B connection. Sometimes I'll take my cross cutters and gently grip one side as I slide my ice cube down. You can also go back and forth and flatten the wires out. Now the hardest part to this is fitting this really thick outdoor jacket in to the back of your RJ45 connection. What you really want is when you go to crimp and terminate this, it shouldn't be hanging out like that. The jacket actually gets crimped down in this space, if I can show you, right here. When you crimp it with your tool, it also crimps down onto the jacket itself, taking all of the stress and tension off of these thin wires. Uh, I see a lot of work done in the field where they crimp it and there's a bunch of exposed wiring here which puts a lot of strain on that wire as it moves around. Uh, also, it just looks kind of tacky to be honest with you from a technician standpoint. So, here's where your needle nose come into play. If you just try to push this thing on here, it's pretty tough to fit in there. The goal would be to have the RJ45 crimp point back here on the out, outer sheathing, which takes the stress off of these wires. It can be difficult just to push it on there uh, and fit this inside of this very small hole on the back. So one tip, a quick tech tip, is to use a pair of needle nose or something to crimp this down and just flatten out this section of your wire. Now you should be able to wiggle that in and I'm going to try to do this so the camera can see but you want to push it on this side and push it from this angle and try to get that outdoor sheathing as far in as you can at least to this point right here where you can see this plastic crimp area. So I have this one in, I'm able to inspect 
the outside, nothing's hanging out. It looks pretty good. Now I can crimp my wire and trim off this excess at the same time. This guy slides in. You can also use this to push it in a little bit more and then crimp. While you crimp, this blade will cut off the excess wire, like so. Sometimes I'll give it two just to be sure. And that is how you put an RJ45 connection on an outdoor rated CAT6 wire.